Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Video Analytics 101. Today we're talking about the data set problem. Which problem do you ask? Well, that's part of the problem. So let's take a look. All right, so before we start, let me explain what a data set is. Well, if we train AI systems, if we work with AI system, we need a data set to train the AI, to train the deep learning network. And the way we do it is we take a data set, which is usually very, very large, to show the AI what it's supposed to detect. And in our industry, it's usually images that we need. So let's say we want to train an AI to detect broccoli. What we need is first we need images of broccoli and then we need labels that are saying what it is. So in this case, it says broccoli. So we have a large number of images of broccoli and we have a large number of labels that belong to it that are saying this is broccoli. And we feed this into the deep learning network and show it, okay, this is a broccoli, this is a broccoli, and this is a broccoli. And um, then we have a validation set where we test how well it does. So we just feed it images of broccoli and see how well does it actually say that this is a broccoli? So that's how it works. That's how any AI system in our industry works, which means that any product out there that uses AI needs data sets and large data sets that are very specific to our domain. So where is the problem? Well, there are two. First is the problem of getting data sets for your specific use case. There are lots of data sets out there, but they are all very generic. So if you want to build an AI for, let's say, Google Photos, yes, there's lots of data sets out there. But if you're talking about video surveillance, that is very different data to uh, like Google Photos, for example. So getting the right data set for your use case is a challenge for a specific industry. And that puts actually large companies to a great advantage here because they have access to the data because they have already existing customers. And also they have the resources to pay people to create these labels because somebody has to sit down and say this is a broccoli and do this for hundreds of thousands of images that costs a lot of money. So large companies are here at an advantage, which puts startups at a disadvantage. And this is very um, industry specific. The second problem is the licensing problem. And this is being ignored by basically everybody. Because the thing is, because it's so difficult to create these data sets and because it requires so many resources, a lot of uh, companies take existing data sets that are available freely online. The largest one is called ImageNet. It's, uh, it has millions of images plus labels to train your AI about all different kinds of classifications. And it was started as a research project originally from researchers in Princeton University, but by now there are many different collaborating and also industries collaborating. Google is supporting it and others as well. And it's really nice. It's the reference data set for almost all applications that you're building in AI. The problem is that it uses images from all over the place. It uses images from Google search, from research projects, from something else and there is no common licensing structure there. So while the labels themselves that are created, so basically saying this is a broccoli, this might be free to use even commercially, the images underlying the data set might not be available commercially and are only available for research. But it's somewhat of a gray area because um, basically you're not shipping these images when you ship your product because you ship your product with an AI model that is trained on these images. So in the end, you're using these images to create your model, your, your weights in the model, and then you ship the model and not the images themselves. But it's still commercial use. So while some people might argue that it's a gray area, it's not so gray after all because in the end, you're using this data commercially and you need to make sure that the underlying images that you use are available commercially. And this uh, is basically not done. So this is a huge legal risk to the manufacturers, but in the end, also to the end users who are using these systems. So as an end user, I would ask, what did you train your AI on? Did you make sure that this is licensed properly? 
And I'm asking this question to almost all video analytics companies that I talk to. And I usually get the answer, yes, it's trained in our own data set, which might be true, but there's a high chance that it's not. Because usually what they mean when they say it's their own data set is that it that they transfer learned another model on their with their own data set. Transfer learning means that you train a, uh, a model based, for example, on ImageNet on a large data set. So that's basically you reference your, your standard model. And then you transfer learn from there by adding your own data. So you might have a general model from ImageNet and then you, uh, then you retrain this or, or augment this with data from video surveillance with your actual application. So you transfer learn it and the output is another model. So you might argue that this is not the original anymore and this can, can be used commercially now because it's using your data, but in reality, it's only adding an additional step in between. So yeah, the area becomes grayer and grayer, but it's still not very clear. And there's the jury is still out there if this is an issue or not. Um, of course, the original image owners have to complain and it has to, there has to be a lawsuit, but it's not 100% uh, clear what the situation is there. So this is a problem and I can recommend when you are an end user, when you're an integrator to ask your manufacturer, so how did you train your system? What kind of data is it based on? But there might be still these technicalities there. So it's not 100% clear. I think what needs to be done, what needs to happen is that industry and research collaborate better where the industry provides the data from the field domain specific data like video surveillance that is not available by researchers because researchers desperately need this data. It's not available. Usually they try to stage it and so on. And on the other hand, researchers need to work with industry to try to make more of these data sets available commercially. Because if, you, if you're not doing this, then industry will create their own data sets and it's basically a, a divided society. And in the end, the people who are losing out there are the startups because they cannot create their own data sets because they don't have the resources, they don't have access to the information, but they are also not allowed to use the research data sets and create a legal risk for themselves. So they're somehow lost in between. In order to democratize data sets, democratizing data, industry and research needs to collaborate much more to create data sets that can be used by everyone. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode on data sets. There's much more to learn and there will be more episodes in the future. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, just a reminder, we're now also available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and Spotify to listen to this on the go in the car. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe on all of these platforms. I hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time.